If you're an owner of an Intel i5 12600K, have you ever thought about upgrading to its successor 13600K? Of course you could do so, but the more important question is, should you? So in today's video, I'll be offering you a quick and dirty comparison between these two processors and what the main differences actually are. Both have their pros and cons, but is the 13600K a worthy successor to the 12600K? Price. In April 2023, the 12600K goes for around 240 to 250 US dollars, whereas the 13600K, needless to say, will cost you noticeably more at 320 to 330 dollars. Who would have thought? Course and threats. Those of you thinking the 12600K is already shining with its 10 cores and 16 threads in total, consisting of 6P and 4E cores, haven't been introduced to the 13600K yet. That thing packs 14 cores and a whopping 20 threads. It's worth noting that both the Alder as well as the Raptor Lake models offer the same number of P cores, and that is 6. Only the amount of those slower E cores has been doubled on the 13600K. Specifications. On paper, there are only minimal clock speed increases. Important, the TDP went from 150 to 181 watts here. Other than that, besides the improved memory support, there's nothing out of the ordinary to see here. Test setup. The 13600K I'll be planting onto my cute little ASRock Z790 PG ITX TB4 motherboard, while the 12600K goes into the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR5. For Raptor Lake, I'm sticking to my usual Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 6000 MHz RAM, while for Alder Lake, I'll be using a comparable kit by G-Skill, namely Trident Z5. We are rounding things off graphically with the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC. Aside from that, the test system is otherwise completely identical, which of course also applies to the cooling solution. Clock speeds. Other than you might expect after having glanced at these specs, in real life we see completely different differences in clock speeds. Meaning, during the multi-core run, the peak horse of the 13600K already clock almost 600 MHz higher, while the E-cores manage a respectable gain of 300 MHz. In terms of boost clocks, the 13600K achieves 200 MHz more on the P-core and 300 MHz on the E-core. Performance, productivity. In the classic Cinebench R23, the 13600K scores 38% higher in the multi-core run. In the single core test, we are then looking at a mere 4%. In the 7-zip benchmark, Raptor Lake leads by a respectable 41%. In the V-Ray 5 test, we are dealing with a similar improvement of 39% over Alder Lake. The Corona rendering benchmark is being completed 30% quicker by the 13600K. In Blender Open Data, the recent model speeds past its predecessor by 38%. When doing video encoding and handbrake, the difference isn't that significant, but nonetheless, Raptor Lake is doing 25% better here. A very similar result can be seen while video rendering with Vegas Pro 20. The more recent CPU is basically 24% faster. Gaming. 3D Mark Time Spy allows Raptor Lake to perform 22% better. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that's an improvement of nearly 16% higher average FPS and 14% smoother lows. Borderlands 3 then makes the 13600K lead by 16% on average and even 18% in the low department. Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't show that impressive gains. Raptor Lake is only 12% faster, which would be 11% as far as lows are concerned. In Far Cry 6, the tables are turning. The average now is 19% above the one of the 12600K, while the minimum values show even 31%. In the racing title Forza Horizon 5, at the very first glance at least, it's a tie. Although I've seen more than a few times by now, Alder Lake delivering 12% higher 1% lows. GTA 5 then, as so often, doesn't show much of a difference. The 13600K on the other hand, offering 14% smoother low values. Horizon Zero Dawn. 
Raptor Lake takes the lead within the charts by a 7% performance uplift and even brings 8% higher lows to the table. Slightly more upgrade joy we see in the game title Metro Exodus. On average, we are looking at an uplift of 11%. When it comes to the lows, that would be 24%. In Red Dead Redemption 2, Raptor Lake happens to perform 8% better on average and accordingly 8% in the 1% lows. Rise of the Tomb Raider. The 13600K manages 7% higher FPS and even a nice 14% as far as 1% lows are concerned. Finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There, we hardly see any noteworthy gains in averages. If you're looking at those 1% lows, you'll have to content yourselves with 7%. Gaming average FPS. I've run through 11 games for my parkour. The average paints a clear picture. It shows that the more recent 13600K's average results are 8% higher, while the 1% low aspect even goes to show a 12% uplift over the 12600K. Power consumption and temperatures. In fact, this is where all the fun comes to a halt. While the 13600K certainly delivers noticeably higher performance under productivity workloads and in gaming compared to its predecessor 12600K, on the flip side, at full load, it also draws over 100 watts more power from the wall, which in my case translates to an increase of almost 53%. And that kinda hurts, I'm not going to lie. Luckily, the power draw at idle only minimally increased and therefore isn't even really worth the mention. Now it's bad enough we've seen that increase in power consumption, but we see that upward trend also when dealing with the unit degrees Celsius. While the 12600K cooled by a 360mm AIO liquid cooler hovers at a cool 58 degrees at full load that is, the 13600K with the same exact cooler runs fairly toasty at 89 degrees. Not that that's an issue for the CPU itself, but those that have no desire to go through manual optimizations, undervolting and the like should pick up a pretty decent, capable CPU cooler then. Conclusion Of course, not a single soul most likely doubted that the 13600K equipped with more cores and higher clock speeds would perform better overall compared to the 12600K. In productivity workloads, the 12600K more so was known to do all right, but shouldn't or couldn't be put to use professionally. With the 13600K, things changed a bit in that regard. It offers a pretty incredible overall package, not only to get professional work done, but also gaming. But especially as far as gaming is concerned, I wouldn't exactly state you have to ring those upgrade bells just yet. If you're asking me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to upgrade from the 12600K to the 13600K just for gaming. The Alder Lake based 12600K still does remarkably well in that regard. Of course, I have no intention to force any of my opinions onto you. This video is only meant to aid you with your choice. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.